Um, I think I didn't like cooking because, I mean, it's instilled in you as a girl. You have to cook for your in-laws wow. when you grow up, which, I mean, no one really told me that apart from my grandmother. Yeah. And so I kind of started hating it. But here so, we are. <laughs> so whenever you're laying at home hungry and lazy, you're like, <laughs> you know what? I better order. That would be the feminist thing to do right now. Welcome to the audacity. In this episode, we're talking about education, careers, and everything in between. hello 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 hey welcome back welcome back here we are back for another episode yes hope you've enjoyed season two so far last two episodes were just one two three knockout i know a cute little a cute little uh uh, combo deal there it was but we realize how uh runaway train (laughs) like it was we were lightning speed, baby. We were. We were turbo. We were, I don't know, like <laughs> full speed ahead. I don't know. Like you think we've never fucking talked before. Right? <laughs> this is our first chance. Jesus. The amount of subjects we skipped, the amount of topics we ping ponged I on. Mean, that was the point. It was kind of by design, but it was. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's yeah enjoyable to listen to. It's very, very scattered of us, but still a nice story. I think we needed to get it out of our system first. Yeah. And we did. Yeah. And we just we just went, <laughs> didn't we? Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well. <laughs> but um no, so we got the we got the breath out of the way. Now we're yes, getting the depth indeed with this episode yes. today. So stay tuned, we've got something really interesting coming up for you. Um, but in the meantime, check us out on Anchor. We would love your contribution. You can help support us there, keep things running, keep things improving. You can also send us an audio message there, maybe giving a reaction to an episode or telling us a funny story or responding to one of our Insta polls, and we can feature that clip in an episode. Mm -hmm. And you can also find us pretty much everywhere at theaudacity.fm, except on Twitter, it's audacity underscore FM. Don't ask any questions. No, if you have listened to the second episode, or I mean, the last episode, you would know. Um, And everywhere else, you'll find us on Linktree, linktree slash audacity.fm. You're listening to The Audacity. Okay, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about some things we should have talked about a long time ago. Yes. Um, and some things, I wouldn't say we have expertise in, but definitely ample amount of experience. Well, yeah, at least the first-hand knowledge. Exactly. This is like something we introduced in the very first episode how we came to be friends. Yes. What we're doing here. What is our yes. purpose? Where do where do all of our <laughs> our struggles come from? <laughs> the root of it all. The root of it all. And it's um education, yeah. university. Yeah. And we're also gonna be talking about careers and everything else post university. Yeah, we're both going through a transition phase right now. Indeed. And um, you know, the the world oh, you wanted to say twenty twenty, but <laughs> No. It's the remix 2021. It's the remix. Uh, this whole situation is not making that transition any no. any much easier or clearer. But we're swimming through it, I have to say. We're swimming through yeah. the tides. Um, we're making the most out of it. And also, you know, we come from a place of immense, immense privilege. So to be able to make this transition at this moment itself yeah. is quite a feat. Oh, definitely. Um, and luck, I would say. Yeah. I mean, okay. And what is this transition we're talking about, right? I am... I've trans. It's not a big one. <laughs> I've transitioned from <laughs> undergrad to graduate <laughs> school. That's still big. It's still I big. Would it's kind of so. a different world because now, well, not that it's okay to slack off in undergrad, but now if you are, it's kind of like, what is the point? You're, What's the point? You're choosing extra to be here. Exactly. <laughs> True. 
and it's a whole nother world because you're already done with university. So you know what university is. Yes. So it's really not new to you anymore. No. And especially, yeah, especially here, it's a weird transition to be in because they're, they're trying to figure out, are you going for more education? Yeah. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in academia? Yeah. Or is this really just for the piece the of paper? Of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. And your transition? I am a working woman, Woo-hoo. as we have established um, in season one itself. I'm still a working woman. Thank God. Touch wood. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am in the beginning of my career right now. Uh, this is my first job ever. Yay. Like a first proper, proper adult job um, uh-huh. where I pay taxes and health insurance and pension. And I want to cry. Um <laughs> <laughs> Have you only been working illegally before? Or <laughs> no, but you know, internships uh, don't yes, know. <laughs> don't include that. <laughs> um, but my transition, yeah, it's a little a little more dramatic yeah. than yours, I would say. Um, Probably, but <laughs> mostly just because you have a different mailing address. <laughs> <laughs> I just went True. from one classroom to the next. True, but also it's I would say it's pretty similar because we're in the middle of a fucking pandemic and everything yeah. is a giant blob of internets um yeah basically but let's start with where it all began and that is university take it back three and a half years jesus freshman year brand 2017. new 2017 brand new students wow ew i mean it started a bit before that right because we had to first of all figure out we were yeah coming here and apply and yeah. take care of all of that i want to i want to hear your story why you chose the university you know that what? you did this is the i like telling this story i I knew I needed to do something quir- quirky with my education <laughs> just because that's who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, up to that point, I'd always done some quirky things. Yeah. Like finishing high school early and going to community college, mm-hmm. and a bunch of other trouble that I caused, um, <laughs> productive trouble. And then I decided when it was time for uni, like most Americans, sure, will come to Europe for a semester abroad. Yeah. It's a good experience. But I knew that wouldn't be enough mm-hmm. experience, like enough time for me, especially being a communications person. Mm-hmm. You can't research that if you're no. not fully embedded in it. So I thought, okay, I'll uh, maybe look at full programs abroad. Um, not only that, it's, it's a whole lot cheaper to go to school here than in America. So much. Like so much. A whole lot cheaper. So much. So that definitely played a role. But um, so the irony is, I applied to a lot of American schools, mm-hmm. I mean, any any top name school you can think of. Mm-hmm. But I was almost dead set on going to school abroad. Mm-hmm. Yet I only applied here. Mark, your story and mine is... Okay, go on. <laughs> Imagine, I don't even know how I convinced myself. Imagine knowing this is where I want to end up. Am I going to take any necessary steps to get there? <laughs> just one. <laughs> and I just, I really fucking lucked out that I got in, yeah. that it, it would have been my first choice anyways. Yeah. Had, had I applied to other international schools, this still would have been my first choice because, yeah. well, at the time, it was number two rated program in the world. Yeah. Since has been upgraded to number, number one. one. It has been for the last three years. Too. Yeah, and yeah. a lot cheaper than my other alternative. Yeah. So very, very, very lucky that, that yeah. I got in because I did certainly not plan well <laughs> had I not. So that was the, the first little thing I wish I... I wish I realized that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you want uh, <laughs> this opportunity, you should apply broadly. Exactly. And research more probably. Yeah. And it's not like it was a hard thing to research. No. <laughs> but we don't we don't think about that time. And no. maybe it's because it was meant to be. I didn't yeah. need to apply elsewhere because I was going to come here. Yeah. That's what I tell myself to not be so embarrassed by what a stupid <laughs> risk Decision. that was. Yeah. Yeah. And your application? This is eerily similar to yours and wait i gotta add one thing i also i'm pretty sure i applied on the deadline day oh my god like i and i had to mail in uh scholarship paperwork on the deadline day (gasps) so i had to have it like postmarked in america because it wouldn't arrive here for (laughs) two weeks basically you're really a daredevil living your life on the edge and you know me am i am am i no am i no never you're like a perfectionist who always plans ahead who always has a plan for everything yeah so that ridiculous reckless that little you know freshman to be i don't know her anymore (laughs) we don't know any of them um my story so i was in my gap year um and i was 
all my friends were in a university then. And they were in mostly American colleges. Mm. So I applied to all American universities and colleges. But my parents, they're a big fan of Europe. And they wanted their children to be, you know, educated in Europe. My dad went to college in Europe. My um, aunt went to college in Europe. A lot of my relatives went to college in Europe. Mm-hmm. They love the concept of Europe, which... Jesus Christ. Um, And they were like, if you go to America, you'll have no culture at all. Yeah. As opposed to what culture am I learning right now? I don't know. But (laughs) that happened. So they were like, you have to, you have to apply to European colleges too. And the only European college I applied to. No. Was. Stop it. Yes. Stop it. Yes. (laughs) You're so fucking dumb. Yeah. What? This is this is really truly. Are you not embarrassed? This is really embarrassing. Are you kidding me? I am not. I joking. never knew this. This oh is my what gosh. I applied to. I don't know, like twelve American colleges yeah. and and the go- and this European university. Although, how funny would it have been if we ended up at the same American college? Ew. <laughs> we wouldn't have been friends. Very different experience. Yes. Oh my gosh! But um, I applied. Um, I got in, and then. We were like, okay, whoop, let's go. <laughs> Didn't know the visa process was going to be oh. anal, literally. Yeah. It was... Not in a good way. No. It's like, Jesus, that was brutal. Because um, we don't even have a Dutch embassy back home. So I had a Aww. flight to Delhi to apply. A whole that, shipping. That is a lot. I know. It's so much effort. But that's how I decided. And obviously, the thing was that, okay, before that, uh, before deciding on schools, um, I didn't know what I wanted to study. I knew I loved writing. Okay. I knew I loved, you know, the very broad idea of, like, the uh, the media landscape that we have right now. Yeah, yeah. And I liked the idea of um, communication in corporations in okay. a business sense. But I also liked business and innovation. So that was, like, yeah. quite, a, quite a weird mix. Yeah. And then, of course, I explored what communication was and the university was you know number two ranked um and i was like okay this is fascinating and my parents had been to amsterdam about 14 times they were in love with the city they were like you will fit here like a glove i was like I think I stick out like a sore thumb, but he, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, so yeah, so my parents were absolutely thrilled, obviously. Like you said, the fees here, girl, like the American universities I applied to with scholarship, oh, yeah. I was I was about to pay like about 16 times what I pay here. Well, you had to fucking pay to apply even too. Exactly. That's, that's big difference number one. Yeah. To apply all those American schools that I applied to, the biggest, no, yeah. longest drawn out recommendation letters, essays, reflection questions. Do you remember Common App? Common App. Ew. All bunch of weird little prompts. I hated it. I had to write a letter to my future dorm mate. Yeah. I had so, so, so much. Here, I literally just sent them a transcript and a cover letter. Same. Literally. And uh, did the immigration, you know, documents. Yeah, and the admissions. Crazy basically. difference. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, the cost, the tuition fees here at least is... I mean, they're still high for us as non- international. non-EU yeah. students. Yeah. But still better. So much better. As an EU citizen, I think you pay like eight times less than us i think so too i think so and we probably pay eight times less than some of the americans are doing yeah yeah yeah, Um, absolutely or especially international students in america yeah oh that's all my friends yeah poor if all of the immigration restrictions aren't harsh enough then you have to pay almost double or triple sometimes your american classmates crazy anywho so you hadn't been here no, I had never wow. been to Amsterdam. At least I had been here before with families. So we traveled yeah. here twice. Um, and that didn't put you off? <laughs> no, of course not. It was This was the first city that I visited in Europe. So yeah. literally like my first transatlantic trip mm-hmm. touching down at Schiphol. And then I think it just had a little tiny piece in my heart because of that. And it it probably always will. I mean, obviously it will because we've lived here for going on four years. Um, So I think, yeah, it had a little sweet spot. 
Um, and then ironically, the hotel we were staying at is now, you know, 100 meters, 200 meters away yeah. from where I live, which is a crazy coincidence. Wow. So I always say, you know, <laughs> despite all the poor planning, it was meant to be. <laughs> it was. I think so. But yeah, I mean, getting here itself was such a ride for me because of the whole oh, yeah. immigration and visa and whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, having said that, I mean, for us, I think we can dedicate another season to the cultural differences that we've experienced. <laughs> but even I, I mean, they come in they come in a lot. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but even in the educational sense, yeah. I would have to say that there is a lot of things that we did have to adjust to. There's a lot to adjust to. And it, it really starts from even before day one. Yes. Just kind of figuring out. Well, like I said, the application process is very casual. Yes. The tone that the university takes sometimes. That is what surprised me the most. very casual. Yeah. Is that it's very casual and nonchalant because every... American university that I applied to and I got in, I had a whole care package for <laughs> yeah. just admissions. So they sent me merch yeah. for just, you know, like fucking for getting in. Getting in. I haven't even said yes to well, them. Well, I guess you paid for it in a weird <laughs> way <laughs> when you applied. True. True. Oof. About $100 each. Yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's branding and marketing and PR. Truly. I mean, that is what I would suggest as a comms expert, I would I know, say to I know. every every yeah. organization. But yeah, that's the thing. Here, it is so like, oh, you're going to go to uni? Okay. Here, well, that's it. I mean, they also just, they know they're building a strong international program mm -hmm. and they expect those students to be strong international people. Yeah. Um. So you're really on your own. You really are. I remember the first... Yeah, first twenty four hours in this country were like a whole uh, whirlwind. A whole whirlwind. I mean, yeah. we both had quite a lot of travel to get through. <sighs> yes, to get here. Yeah, and I, I this was my first time living uh, outside of home. Yeah, so it was also my first time leaving mm -hmm. home. Yeah, so it was an emotional Ex flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember I was sat next to a really cute German student who was just coming home from like a summer break or something. Aww, and I was very nervous, very yeah. young, and he was just literally just explaining europe to me i think he's like don't don't worry you're gonna do great university's fun like en enjoy amsterdam i like that city all german so students. so so adorable i love it um and then yeah then you we just kind of i have wandered around for a week because <laughs> i got yeah. here early then the university finally had some orientation, orientation to help yeah. yeah give us some structure but yeah. I mean, for me, it wasn't the first time I left home. Obviously, I lived yeah. in boarding school for like two years. So I knew what it was like to be away from home. And my parents were dropping me off. So that wasn't a big deal either. But I mean, I went through a housing nightmare that yeah. we can, I don't know, talk about when you have, I don't know, five free hours. <laughs> <laughs> we can teach a master class. Yes. Avoiding scams and all kinds of Ugh. hecticness. And it's you know, everything's 10 times harder when you're not actually here. Exactly. To arrange a living place before yeah. you even <laughs> take yeah. off. So the first two weeks in this country for me were a nightmare, I would Aww. say, because of that. Um, but other than that, I guess it was so foreign to me in every sense. Yeah. And yeah, after my parents left, like I was an independent woman who was thrown into the wild. And mm. I mean, I come from you know, immense privilege. Yeah. And I never had to even move my finger to do anything. It would just appear <laughs> in front of me. Yeah. And this time, like I was doing my own groceries. Even the concept of laundry was very foreign to me. And that sounds like I'm such a spoiled brat. No, and yeah. to be honest, I was. But you're not the only one of our friends who has that experience. Yeah. It's a transition. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know how to, like, I didn't know how to work a fucking stove. Like, I didn't know anything. Huh. I mean, I, I knew it all in concept, but I did not yeah. have to practice hours. Exactly. Of doing it. So, or just remembering little, you know, little simple things like, you need to have, I don't know, you need to have extra batteries. Yeah. Any any little adult thing. Exactly. That you have to figure out or, I don't know, don't don't run out of dish soap. It's just going right? to make such a hassle in your life. Right. That and like buy sensible towels. Yeah. Like, you have a favorite size <laughs> towel. That's not a thing you learn. Oh my gosh. Like, or, or I don't, yeah, figuring out a cleaning schedule or exactly. routine or. That, like 
figuring out when to do yeah. your laundry because you can't do laundry every fucking day because what's the fucking point? Yep. I don't know. Like a lot of things. A lot of just- cute little adjustments. I mean, I think that's any any student moving away to, yeah. to uni is going to go through that transition. And then finances also because mm-hmm. I was in a budget when I was living in university because mm-hmm. my parents would give out you know, a certain yeah, amount of money. Yeah, one, what's about it. This is an expensive city to live in. Very expensive. One of the most, I mean, I don't know, but expensive. Yeah, it's, it's definitely up there. Um, yeah. And it's hard because you, you want to see and do everything. Exactly. And you're so excited. And like, yeah. obviously you have to get the touristy stuff yeah. done, but then yeah. there's so much more to do when you're living here. Exactly. If you can afford it. <laughs> true and if the weather's nice enough to allow you to go which is like three days in the year so yeah good luck <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no but i think and it uh, something that i will tell myself i would have told myself mm-hmm. um or like my 18 year old self oh <laughs> like then is like don't regret the partying yeah i would say that i know a lot of people will be like Oh, you know, don't overdo it. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna, yeah, yeah. you're gonna regret it. Whatever. Absolutely not. No. 18, 19, 20, 21 ish. I would say. I think I went. <laughs> Go for it all the way. Yeah. No. I went all the way, and I, I have absolutely no regrets. No regrets. No. Same. And I mean, like I, I think I mentioned this in the first episode ever. Yeah. This was also my first time drinking. Yeah. Exactly. So it was trial by fire. Exactly. And trial by high proof alcohol exactly and we really you really had to fall into it yes um because you're kind of alone on your own on the other side of the world and no one teaches you how to drink you know yeah so you learn not or even how to just how to go to a club or a party exactly or or how to um yeah just live in a cosmopolitan world world coming from quiet suburbs exactly like how to even stuff like okay the thing (laughs) as for us students Mm -hmm. I mean, we would go to clubs when it was usually free if it's not on a Friday, right? Yeah. So we would go on Tuesdays and Thursdays. There was, I know, a place that de- did Techno Tuesdays as much as I hate oh Techno. Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, yep. But then if you go on a weekday, you have to be ready for the fact that you have to be ready for a 9 a.m. lecture uh-huh. on the next day. And that's fine. That's you are young. You can handle it. That's fine. Yeah, that's also that's what first year is. Right, that's what first year is for exactly. It doesn't feel like that at the moment. Yeah, it feels like you're making bad decisions and compromising yeah. your future, and you're really yeah. not. I would I would tell myself that. The second thing I would tell myself is to learn to cook more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I absolutely hate cooking. Yeah, I genuinely despise it, and I've never had to cook in my life. Obviously, huh? And now I have to cook because yeah. It's not like I can't order it. I would. I love ordering it, but like Nepali food, who's gonna make that for me? True. Or Indian food, or any food with flavor, pretty much. <laughs> or spice, or spice. yeah, texture, yeah, anything. No, I. I mean, I didn't cook in the beginning because yeah, my kitchen was shared and it was dis- yeah disgusting. Ugh, yeah, I did not. Um, but then you to think that we laid on that kitchen floor multiple times. <laughs> the chairs alone would have been disgusting enough but yes we had to take it to the floor yes um no that was bad and then i finally learned how to <laughs> learned how to cook and yeah. started it and then enjoyed that but a shift the shift yeah no i yeah i would i would encourage young people to learn how to cook it's just a yeah it's just a life skill you have um, I think I didn't like cooking because, I mean, it's instilled in you as a girl. You have to cook for your in-laws wow. when you grow up, which, I mean, no one really told me that apart from my grandmother. Yeah. And so I kind of started hating it. But here so, we are. So whenever you're laying at home hungry and lazy, you're like, <laughs> you know what? I better order. That would be the feminist thing to do right now. <laughs> I love it. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. This is how we make poor financial decisions. <laughs> no. no. I mean, and that's just how we had to adjust to life at the beginning. But yes. also, like, adjusting to uni was yes. a whole thing, yes. too. Um, all those things you described while you were drawn to communication, you sort of quickly find out it's not, exact, no. not exactly the brand of communication Mm-mm. that's uh, common here. Yeah. Communication here is the science. Exactly. A very well laid out, historically developed social science 
rigorous discipline. Albeit very Eurocentric. Sure. But... It is a science. It is very research based. Yeah. That is something I wish I knew before. Like we're not we're not here learning how to write speeches no. or I don't know, have better discussions no. or build conversation like no. No. We're learning how to do high level market data research and analytics. All based and- on empiricism, by the way. Yeah. Which it's- is fascinating, but too many people don't know that no. going into it. That's why our program has such a high dropout rate. Dropout rate. rate. Yep. They think this is, um, I think the liberty of doing a BA as opposed to a BSc is that there is more creative freedom in the sense of how you define what you study. Yeah. Here, as I mean, I don't think any one of us can really define what communication science is, <laughs> to be very fucking honest it's with you. It's very broad. Yeah. Um, we don't have... I wouldn't say the liberty, but it is definitely, um, you know, structured in such a way that it needs to be backed up, number one. And it needs to be well, well thought out, researched, put on effort into. Absolutely. Every step. And some people are really well suited for that. Yeah. I mean, that's why we were able to to finish it. And that's why we're so fucking obnoxious about it. Yeah. I think we're the only stream... (laughs) who keep talking about how much we love what we study. Well, that's great. Uh, yeah. I would rather I would rather be in our <laughs> position too cuz I do love it. And also all the other subjects yeah, are to just this day. Well, and that's yeah, another difference here. There we go. We should keep count. Right. But in American colleges or universities, yeah. you get to study other things. Yeah. You do like general education. Yeah. Because you have that whole extra year. And you don't decide your major until... Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know when. But, yeah. You know, here it's completely different. It's only a three-year program and you're only focusing on your thing, which you've already pre-selected. Yeah. Just a, a lot of pressure for an 18-year-old, I can imagine. And you have like half a year to decide, like to do what yeah. you want, basically. Basically. But that too, I mean, it's still within the sphere of communication yeah. science. Yeah. It's still... Sure, it's not in the curriculum, but it's... No. It's within the subject. We're lucky our program's somewhat flexible you get some yes. time to do electives or a minor or yes and we both did minors that we like yeah and so, they kind of filled in some yeah. missing pieces yeah um and then you get a lot of freedom yeah to move on to an internship actually yeah and here i think we're kind of getting closer to the transition point yes now we're you know halfway through our yes. education or maybe even at the end yeah. of our bachelor's tiptoeing this line of moving into career world yes out of the university yes internship for me my experience was so good (laughs) that i ended up working there so that's amazing for me but it was genuinely such an eye-opening experience even if your university does not mandate an internship i would highly recommend you to do it yeah I know many, many companies only hire students who are enrolled at a university um, and that and they would be the only one eligible to do internships. Yeah. If you find an organization that does not restrict you like that, do it. It's oh definitely it's, I mean that is considering if it's you don't already important. have professional experience before. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, and you know that's what it's for to give you this professional yes. taste you liked it so much you stayed exactly plenty of people have that yeah story i think it's the same for you right i mean not that you stayed but yeah i mean i had professional working experience before so that that factor wasn't new but of course like my internship was still a huge experience for me yeah. it was really fun work um really fun company of course organization (laughs) but also very hectic because it was you know happening in the same time that the covid pandemic was uh picking up it would have been hectic anyway i would say yeah being the organization that it is definitely yeah um but then yeah i think because of that timing though as as much as i had a desire to keep working Mm because i really did just love that fact that finally I didn't have to like sit around worrying about reading (laughs) or feeling guilty that I wasn't studying enough. I could just close my laptop at 5 p.m. and sign out for the weekend. Oh, love that. And work on having those boundaries and that personal time. That is, 
Yeah. And I tried to bring that back into my studies now and it just, it doesn't work. No. Your no. brain can't do that. No. Um, so as badly as I wanted to continue that and like keep working right away. Yeah. The hecticness of what was the world was yeah. told me to maybe just go back to school right now. And that is what you did. Which I thought was the easier route. No. Um, I don't think I, any. I don't think doing anything right now is easy. Exactly. Because it's still hectic now to be in grad school. Because yeah, so do you have the same feelings you did in undergrad? Mm -hmm. I should be reading. I should be studying. I'm not doing enough. But it's almost an additional level of, well, it's not just practice anymore. No. This is the this is the real. This deal. is actually the real deal. Yeah. I mean, unless you're doing a, a PhD, then maybe you, this is an intermediate step. But for most people, this is the end. Yeah. Game. This is it. So yeah. Now you just feel a bit. Now you feel a whole lot more stupid if mm -hmm. you're slacking off. Yeah. Like you said, it's it's hard to start working. It's hard to start studying. Yeah. You just have to choose your heart, you know, that sort yeah. of thing. And there's not a look, it, grand scheme of things, it's not a very big difference if you stick around for yeah. a year to work or study True. a bit more. Yeah. Like at some point you'll fully cross the, the threshold. threshold. My grandmother is actually bullying me to get a master's degree when, yeah. I, when I told her, like, I'm taking my own sweet time to do a master's. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I just don't know when. Um, and she's like, oh, so you're just going to work for a year, right? That's it, right? Then you're going to do your master's, right? <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> well, and there's also a lot of value in doing that and taking some real world experience back into the classroom yes. with you. Yes. That brings me to a really good um, segue here that is... When I first entered my internship, uh -huh. um, there were a set of expectations I had. Um, firstly, it was using what I studied um, into my work uh, or into my internship or applying it, basically. Mm -hmm. And second was also, you know, learning about professional work culture. And especially because you're working in an international, and I mean, depends on where you work, but I was working yeah, in an international exactly high level company, high, huge reputation, huge stakes, um, fast based, very fast based. Um, and also your responsibilities are of a regular employee. You're just, your position is just of an intern. Um, so those were my expectations going in and sure those expectations were fulfilled, but then you can see an evolution, um, in your expectation as an employee versus ah. your expectation as an intern sure and that's what fascinated me because as much as I loved what I studied and I loved my degree um it was still research-based academics I hate this oh yeah so <laughs> <laughs> no you're right research-based that and <laughs> as an employee now I am more on strategy and execution uh -huh. this is now i'm i'm learning from tenured employees who are you know senior to me totally it's still communication it's still um i would say science yeah yeah but your expectations change you become in my opinion you become more strategic oh. You want to do things to not accelerate not just accelerate your personal growth but then you start thinking about the company's growth you start thinking about your Aww. audience's growth wow and that is a shift i didn't expect because the the focus the lens shifted huh um yeah you don't get that as an intern no you certainly don't get that as a student no i don't think how my research is supporting yeah. the university <laughs> at least at this level and i wouldn't and sure like it, it could be implied that there is an incentive incentive to it yeah um, having said that, I really don't think so. I think just working in that sense and if, and this is, I mean, huge props, um, gratitude, kudos to my managers, uh, to my leadership and everyone else who supports me. I think they also kind of facilitated this, uh -huh. yeah. sh this shift, but that is something you learn as an employee and sure, like there is you know, a vision of where you want to end up in your career. And this is like, you know, the first seven months of my career. So mm -hmm. there is, I can see myself going somewhere, but it is definitely not what I first envisioned like three years back in the yeah. beginning of university. 
Hmm. That was such a long what, oh, no, I just I'm nice and warm inside because it's like such a nice progression for you. Yeah. And I'm just thinking about other other graduates who are like also starting that process. Yeah. And I also know I'm super glad <laughs> I'm not working right now yeah. when I hear things like that because I know how hard you work and how long you work. Yeah. And you know as as much as I have reading to do and that I should be doing and yeah. I, eventually I get to it. Um, I have a lot more freedom to relax right now. You do. Which yeah. is such a nice thing in these times. Truly. To just yeah. th- be a bit overwhelmed yeah. given to it. No, that's true. But I would also say, again, like this is coming from a working person. There's high risks and high intensity, uh-huh. but there's high rewards, I would say. Totally. So it's it does wear you down. Because and I'm, I'm also like factor in the fact that we're in a fucking pandemic. I'm working from home. I haven't seen my colleagues in real life in forever. Yeah. The environment has completely changed. Yeah. So sure, there Ooh, is that's a lot. There's some wear and tear oh. here. The machinery needs oiling. <laughs> um, so the exhaustion is also you know um, amplified. Yeah. But having said that, you know you kind of get your rewards out of it too. Oh, of course. But also, I would also like the freedom of, you know, my <laughs> studying days <laughs> of just finishing reading an assignment and then having the whole summer free. True. <laughs> That's what I want. Huh. So yeah, maybe we'll have, we'll probably have a little switcheroo at some point in the at future. At some point, yeah. Well, I need a bit more stimulation in my day. <laughs> so I go to work and you need a bit of different, different type of stimulation. Yeah. So you go back to school. Huh. Let's see. In the meantime, however, though, you do get a nice perspective on work culture mm-hmm. and how those things might be evolving right now. Mm-hmm. While I kind of get to see how education is mm-hmm. evolving in these times. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you're also in a unique position working for such an international yes. company. Yes. I'm sure there's a lot of fun shifts you've had to get used to there. Yeah. I mean, The first and foremost would be adjusting to an environment that is so professional, you know? Um, Yeah, like the international bit's not new because our classroom was very Exactly. Um, The the professionalism is something that you you need to get used to. There is, Mm. you know, a working style. There's a working rhythm. There's, you know, the pace that you need to really, really adjust to. Um, because as a student, you can work in your own pace. You have a deadline. That's about it. But here you're working with other people. You have to yeah. adjust to that pace as well. That is something very, I think, something to get used to and something to learn from. Mm-hmm. Second thing you, um, I would say that is important to learn <laughs> as a good employee, number one, and interesting as a communication science student Uh is that no matter what your position is in the company you need to put your opinions and your thoughts and ideas forward however how do you communicate it to people Uh. who don't have the same communication style as you there is a certain sense of persuasion involved there is you need to use words that can be heard Mm -hmm. um, and you need to use styles that can be heard that is also something you discover because what if your opinions are getting, you know, in through one ear and the out through the other, yeah. just because you're not conveying the right way. True. Sure. You can argue and say, saying, you know, no opinion should be ignored, whatever, whatever, but no, you're in a very fast paced working environment where Absolutely. every second counts. Well, it doesn't even, it doesn't really matter the company or the industry. No. That's kind of the standard. Everywhere. Exactly. So you need to, you need to know how to, huh. how to talk to people, yeah. um, how to really do what not what you want to do but like you're you're making a positive oh yeah especially as the especially as the new person exactly you want to stand out and even exactly i mean for you it's you know necessary because it's your livelihood yeah (laughs) but also as an intern yeah it's really important to find that opportunity to stand out exactly otherwise you're just a blip in their memory and you want to instead be meaningful or impactful exactly um, and you want to make sure that, you know, you, you, you're you good on execution, yeah. but you're also good on strategy. Um, yeah. You're also good on facilitation. Uh, so that is that is one thing. Well, and it's something I think, I don't know, it'll be so fun to see how our 
Gen Zers Ooh. handle this yeah. structure? Because I think when I need to in the office, the millennial in me <laughs> yeah. is really leading the charge. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> very accommodative, very. <laughs> yes. Compromising. Overextending. Yes. Yeah. No boundaries. Yes. yes. Whereas I think a Gen Zer understands a bit more about a healthy balance. It's still very yeah. professional and polite. Yeah. But yeah. But it's, knows it's limits. Well, and I know they're also under so much scrutiny. Yes. At least at my internship, one one uh, like comment I kept getting praise was like, you're so well spoken. You know how to like present your ideas yes. very well and coherently. Yes. And I'm like... Do, do other people do not? not? <laughs> um, but it was something I had taken for granted. Being yeah. Studying in an international classroom forced yes. us to have to explain things very clearly because there's exactly. so many language misunderstandings. Lost in translation. And so many different perceptions and worldviews. Exactly. And even just the ability to not start or end every sentence with like, um, so, or oh, totally. Yes. That is a skill. It's all. It's a skill to practice. Skill. That and one thing I've. That is one thing I've gotten as well. And the second I've gotten is positive attitude. I keep hearing you have such huh. a positive attitude. Huh. <laughs> you never say no to anything. You haven't been beaten down by de- <laughs> decades of a successful career yet. And I think. I mean, number one, that's props to the work environment. Yeah. Um, and number two is the millennial in me. I think as much as of a, of a cuss baby I am, and I want to yeah. identify as a gen yeah, yeah, yeah. here, I want to compromise. I want to appease, and, uh-huh, appeal and everything. I want to reach a happy medium and I want to do what is best for others. <laughs> huh. Not, so, not that Gen Zers don't want that, no. but they do have a different approach exactly. to their yeah, order of priorities. Exactly. Um, this was really annoying for me going from the internship back to the classroom yeah now i I do hear those classmates speak who have never worked a day in their life probably and every i every sentence starts with like i kind of Mm. feel like the the just yeah a little bit of whining yes a little bit of out of touch of reality yes i'm just like if we were in a conference room i know our boss would be rolling their eyes they wouldn't let you and instead the teacher just has to sit there like continue develop this idea keep going (laughs) Poor, poor lecturers and tutors, honestly. <laughs> no, uh. yeah. And going back to work culture itself, I mean, this is not entirely work culture. This is company culture as well. Mm-hmm. It depends on the organization you are in. I am extremely proud of um, the company culture that we have. Yeah. It is very inclusive and it is certainly to develop um the diverse the diversity in us yeah, like the diverseness yeah. in us um so i'm extremely glad that i landed up here mm-hmm. touch wood um, <laughs> <laughs> um and that really is congruent to and ties into work culture so as much as of a generic perspective i can give you as an employee yeah that's a lot of well that's a lot of perspective already for seven months yeah. <laughs> <laughs> plus some but uh, plus some um but it really depends on your company as well you yeah. might be working for a very regressive organization and that would completely flip the switch on how you very view different work culture totally um well and right now we're all stuck in one one yes. common culture which is uh, having to from work home. from home <laughs> yes would you keep working from home if you could it, uh, the, are there benefits to it the benefits yes comfort there's okay. comfort sure um like you know the the accessibility of just laying in the couch and doing something or not yeah. having to turn on the camera stuff like that oh, you yeah. know that's perfectly well and fine but no, I would, yeah. I want to go back to the office so bad. I want the pre-COVID office routines yeah. so bad. And I know we're not going to do that because, I mean. It'll take a long time to get all the way back to that. Yeah. Also, because we know we can function working from home and we can yeah. actually run a company working from home. Well, that's hopefully the benefit, right? You can yeah. find a nice blend, yeah. a happy medium. Yeah. 
But yeah. you personally want yeah. miss that office life. I think I mean, yeah, the routine is nice. The routine is nice and I've mentioned this so many times in the radio in our previous season. Uh-huh. The demarcation of work life and personal life yeah. is splendid once you're literally changing your environment. Yeah. Um, and that just is so good for your own sanity. That's true. It's it's a hard skill to do if you're living in a very tight space all by yourself. Exactly. Um, it's a whole lot easier if you have to physically yeah, yes. go somewhere. What about you? Would you study from home all the time? Or I, would you want to work from home? Well, I would I would totally keep studying from home. Yeah. Um, I think it, because it's actually so much more efficient to just go to a lecture in your living room and not have to like get there or travel there just for one class or something. <laughs> I bet, yeah. I mean, if you're at an office for, you know, an eight-hour day, you're getting a lot done, so it's kind of worth it. Mm-hmm. If you're going to school for one tutorial session or even one, one group project meeting, Jesus. And, um, you know, I know like Zoom class, it's been fun watching people who I know are usually very quiet. Yeah. Now having the confidence to like speak up a bit more because there's not nice. so much pressure when you're not yeah. sitting face to face with all of these people you're right so it's a bit more accessible i think for everyone to learn that way yes i don't personally have a problem with it but that's also because i've already had so much class time yes so i feel for all the freshmen and all the brand new people who are studying <sighs> yeah. from home for the first time truly i already got the experience i'm kind of good mm-hmm and I don't mind the the home life demarcation. Mm-hmm. So that works for me. As far as in an office someday, yes, I hope there's some happy mm-hmm. medium. So you mm-hmm. get the perks of when you need the comfort and when you can work from home to get that. Yes. Or, you know, when you want things in real life, you can get that. So I hope, and this is research that we're doing, and I hope companies will catch on to it. Like finding a blend is really better for literally everyone i think so too and i think it moves us to a less ableist world yeah um if we find that blend it's a lot more inclusive it actually allows for a lot more boundaries yes and it also shows that there is an employer employee trust relationship yeah that's built yeah it's all it's a lot more sacred too yes now they're literally in your living room or your kitchen with you exactly so everyone needs to be a whole lot more respectful of that exactly um and then this also goes to show like as working parents yeah how much there goes into being working parents. yeah and i can't relate to that i'm sure it's extremely stressful exactly um but also from what i know from like my family back at home like it's also so rewarding to have that much extra time right together exactly i mean I keep wondering this for my own parents when, I mean, they started a business literally as soon as I was born. Yeah, I'm assuming like, and they probably missed out so much on my childhood yeah. because of that. I just like, I'm assuming if they had to work from home, sure, it would have been harder, Yeah, but also they would kind of have their child around, huh. you know? That's a good point. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's a lot more. There's a huge variety of perspectives. Yeah. On I this. mean, yeah, that's why this hybrid idea is, is so popular. Cause I, f- exactly. I think you can get the, the perks of each exactly. and kind of, yeah, balance out the negatives. And that way. your employees can finally be global. You can absolutely, you can have employees from everywhere in the continent yeah. working for you and your division and your yeah. team. Well, and you know, you, you could have, uh, done that beforehand but yeah. now it's so much more normalized exactly because we were forced to sure exactly but we're we all know how to function in this way now. exactly and that has so many nice yeah, yeah implications yeah i think like you said i 100 percent agree um moving forward the working ecosystem should be this collaboration yeah between IRL working. I mean, both of it is working, you know. <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, but working in the working environment uh-huh. and working from home. And working from home. Yeah. No. And I think, I mean, summing this all up, end of the day, any any workplace or any university who's not going to somehow fundamentally change yeah. because of this, take yeah. this all as an experience or an experiment. Yeah. They're really missing out. Yeah. This is a huge learning opportunity. Yeah. For every industry, 
ever. And that that sh- that pressure though to learn and grow and adapt should not be on the workers or the students. Exactly. Y- your job is to get through it and survive, right? Exactly. Now. At some point, I do hope again some changes can be made. Yes. But that was that was it from us, I guess. Yeah. Um. That's our our little path it would be so fun to actually like follow this up much later down like mid-career right adaptation see how see see how wrong we got things <laughs> or how right we got yeah. them yeah no this is just insight on our experience yeah from our experiences um but of course um we don't know everything no. and, and i'm you know we're super curious to see yeah. how do you experience this either studying from home working from home whatever so do let us know yes find us online um you're always welcome to send us a dm all of our social media is at audacity.fm except on twitter it's audacity underscore fm or you can also just check out our link tree there slash audacity.fm we would love if you support us on anchor you can make a contribution if you'd like or you could leave us a voice message which we will feature in our future episodes all of that on anchor anchor is also a platform that hosts basically our podcast yeah. and it shows you other platforms that we're available in fun little partner for us yes in the meantime share this with your friends share this with your enemies share this with your employers and or teachers eh, maybe not <laughs> i'm going to i would <laughs> they gotta learn all right this has been this has been fun and we'll see you in the next episode Bye bye <laughs>